All right, guys, so we're going to be looking at 7.2.6 sales tax uh, tips and markup. And it begins on page 151. So that's how you should be titling your page. It's the chapter 2, lesson 6 out of the 7th grade textbook. So sales tax tips and markup, and this is real world. I do realize that you'll be able to use calculators in the real world, and so I'm fine with you using calculators for this as well. Um, it'll be on you to make sure you understand the process. The math you should already know how to do. All right, so the real world link that they show here is uh, Lonzo plans to buy a new kayak that costs $2,100, but when he buys the kayak, it actually costs more because he lives in a county where there is a 7% sales tax. That's what happens. You can find the amount of tax on an item by multiplying the price by the tax percentage. So circle the amount below that shows the amount of tax Alonzo will pay for the kayak. So it's $2,100 and he's paying 7% and it says to multiply the price times the tax percentage, which is 7%. So the $2,100 times the 7%. So right now I'd like for you to write down on your paper $2,100 times 0 0.07 equals, and then I want you to solve that. This is the tax, this is the price. Okay, so I don't need you to write everything down. Um, you're going to find, now notice that I changed that percent to a decimal because that's what we have to do to be able to multiply. We don't know how to multiply with percentages, we know how to multiply with decimals, so that's what we're going to change it to. You could also change it to a fraction if you really want to. So your answer should be, let's see, $147. So $147 is how much tax you're going to pay for a $2,100 kayak. Number two says use the amount of tax from exercise one to fill in the receipt at the right and then find the total cost Alon Alonzo paid for the kayak. So go ahead and copy this down over here. I want you to copy that down. It's Jimmy's kayaks. The kayak is $2,100. The sales tax is 147, and so the total is 22.47. So if if Alonzo shows up with just $2,100 in cash, he's not going to be able to buy this kayak. He needs to have $2,247. Um, number three says to multiply 1.07 times 2,100. How does that result compare to your answer in exercise two? So please go ahead and do that. You're going to do the 2100 times 1.07. Pause the video now so that you can do that. And what you notice is it should come out to be $2,247. Um, look at that for a minute and tell me why do you think that 1.07 came out to the same as when we did the 0 .7, 0 0.07 times 2100 and then added it back to 2100. Think about why do you think that works? Why is 1.07 going to work? We're going to go over why in just a moment. So number four says on Alonso's kayaking trip, hiring a guide costs $50 and Alonso wants to give the guide a 10% tip. Explain how to find the tip. So now we have um, that we are spending $50, but we need to pay tip for this guide, and so it's a 10% tip. How much will that be? Think about that. Pause the video. All right, hopefully you figured that you're going to take that $50, and you're going to multiply it times 0 .10 or just 0 .1 would be fine, and that you're going to end up paying $5 for the tip. Now, again, they're just asking you how do you find the amount of the tip. If I was finding the amount of the total cost, I would have to add that $5 back in and say it's $55 for the total cost. But this is just for tip. So this is our tip, and this is our total. Just like this was our tax, and this was our total. All right, so let's go on, and we'll talk about that 1.07. So sales tax is an additional amount of money charged on items that people buy. The total cost of an item is its regular price plus the sales tax. So this is where I want you to go ahead and write this down because I'm going to show you why um, this works and why that 1.07 would work. 
So you're paying for the regular price. So let's say it's the $2,100 kayak. You have to pay all of that. So the percentage is you're paying 100%. So that's $2,100. But you also have to do the tax, which is going to be 7%, which we found out was $147. Now, to get the total, we add these two up, and when we add those two up, we get the 2247. Well, if you think about it, if you added these up, you would have 107% is how much you're paying for this, this um, kayak. And if we made that into a decimal, to the left to the left, ditch the sign, 1.07 is the multiplier we would use to cover both the exact amount for the regular price plus the sales tax. So it's important that you see that it's easier. If they're asking you for just the sales tax, use the 7%, 0.07, done, found the 40, $147. But if they're tax, asking you for the total amount, you might as well multiply using this 1.07 so that you can tell what the total amount is without having to do the second step, which is adding the two amounts together. Example number one says Drew wants to buy exercise equipment that costs $140 and the sales tax is 5.75%. What is the total cost of the equipment? So the first one is to add the sales tax to the regular price. And I want you to write that down. Method one, add sales tax to regular price. So if we're doing, um, if we're going to find the tax for $140, we're going to do 140 times 0 0.0575 and we're going to find that amount which I'm just taking their answer is 805 and then we're going to take that amount and we're going to add it back into the regular price to get the total 148.05. So method one add sales tax to the regular price so I had to find the tax then add it to the regular price. Method two, which is the one we just went over, method two, please write this down, says add the percent of tax to 100%. So instead of multiplying by a multiplier of 0 0.0575, I'm now going to add my two percents together, my 100% and my 5.75%, and I'm going to make a new multiplier of 1.0575 and multiply that number times 140. So I'm going to do 140 times 1.0575. I'm not really worried about lining up my numbers because we're using calculators anyway, right? And this ends up being $148.05. And we get straight to the answer here instead of having to do the two steps, the step one and then the step two of adding it together with the original. All right. And I mean, because I think of this as being a mental math kind of thing in my head. I'm just going to do 100% plus 5.75% is 105.75%. Boom. Then I make it into a decimal and then I multiply it times the cost. So these are our two methods, method one and method two. You can use whichever method you'd like to do A. Again, um, this time they've used a fraction here, but I hope that you guys have figured out by now how to change that fraction into a decimal. If not, you go with whatever you need to do to get to the answer. Go ahead and pause the video now and we'll come back. All right, so I changed it to 5.5% because it is a decimal that I can change easily, um, or a fraction that I can change easily to a decimal. Um, then I'm going to multiply in method one, $42 times 0 0.055 and get $2.31 in tax. I'm gonna add that $2.31 to my original price of $42, and I get a total of $44.31. That's method one. Now method two, which is my preferred method, to be honest with you, I'm going to do my 42 times 1.055, so that includes the price plus the 5.5% sales tax, and I still get $44.31. It's completely up to you which method you like to use. Obviously, you see both of them come out to the same answer. So um, just putting it out there, whichever method you want to use. You might want to practice both. So a tip or gratuity is a small amount of money in return for a service. The total price is the regular price of the service plus the tip. 
a store sells items for more than it pays for those items, the amount of increase is called the markup. The selling price is the amount the customer pays for the item. So um, I want you to copy this down. These are good vocab. Whoops. So let's call this vocab. And go ahead and I want you to write both of these sections down. Um, make sure you underline or, or highlight tip and gratuity in markup. Of course, sales sell, selling price isn't necessarily what the store paid for it. It's what they're selling it to you for. So that already includes their markup. I'm just going to keep talking while you write this down. Um, you got to figure that they have to use markup because they have operational cost. You know, when you go into a Walmart, you've got all that overhead lighting. You've got the building rental. You've got um, the stocking fees because you're putting all this merchandise on a on a shelf. If it doesn't sell, it's taking up space so that you could you cannot sell other things. So there's a lot of costs that go into having a business, and small businesses incur even more cost. And so of course they have to upsell or increase or mark up their price so that they can recoup some of those costs. You know they're not going to usually sell it to you for what they call wholesale what they paid for it because then they're not making any money on it. All right, if you need to still have to write that down, you need to pause and go back. All right, example number two says a customer wants to tip 15% on a restaurant bill that is $35. What, be, what will be the total bill with tip? So here's what we're looking at, total bill with tip, and that's what we talked about back in the real-life example that we did at the beginning. So method one, please write this down. Method one, add the tip to the regular price. So in this method, we're finding the tip and then adding it into the regular price. So again, we change it to a decimal, and we multiply 15% times 35, so 35 times 0 0.15. We find that amount, which is $5.25, and we add it into the $35 cost so that we can find out what we need to leave for our total bill. So this is if the exact amount of money that we're leaving on the table to cover the bill plus the tax, or I mean not tax, um, tip. If you left $5.25 and that's it, you're not paying for your lunch. <laughs> so you are not doing any favors to that um, waiter because you just left without paying for anything. Um, now method two, so this is just like we were working on before. Method two says add the percent of the tip to 100%. So if I'm going to leave a 15% tip, then I'm going to now multiply times 1.15. So I'm going to do my $35 times 1.15 to cover my entire bill plus the tip of 15%. And when you do that, you come out to that $40.25 straight away, and you know that you need to leave $40.25 on the table. So method two is adding the percent of tip to the 100% before you multiply. Exactly what we just did with um, sales tax. So number three says a haircut cost twenty dollars. Sales tax is four dollars, or sorry, four point seven five percent. Is twenty five dollars sufficient to cover the haircut with tax and a fifteen percent tip? So they're putting a lot of things together here. Okay, we're paying. Um, I'm trying to look and see if they combine both percentages. It looks like they did. I disagree with that method. So what's okay, what's happening here is that they're not paying tip on tax is what's happening. So they're saying, okay, we're gonna include, we're gonna combine the tip and the tax together, and that's gonna be 19.75%. We're gonna change that to a decimal, multiply it times the $20 and then um, add in the $20 and find out if that's enough money. So it turns out that it would be $23.95. So because they left $25, they covered a sufficient amount to cover the tax plus the tip. Now think about that, if it was separate and you're not paying um, and you're not figuring out tip, 7% of their 15% tip is actually going towards your tax. So you're not really tipping them appropriately if you just leave 15% um, and you don't cover the tax. Now usually it's already included whenever they give you the balance so you don't need to figure that out separately but it's just an example. So they've combined the two. They've done the 15% plus the 
plus the 4.75% and figured it out. Um, so mental math over here, it's saying that 10% of a number can be found by moving the decimal one place. So if it's $20, then $2 is 10%. If you want to go with 20%, then you know that um, you're multiplying it times 0.2, and so it's going to be um, $20 is going to have a balance of $4 for 20% of $20. I feel like that was a lot of numbers and words, and none of it made sense, but it's all right here in this little mental math. Um, 10%, 20% is 10% times 2. Da -da. All right, guys, let's do B and C. Again, you can use whichever method you want to use, whether you want to uh, figure it out with, the, tip, with the, the original amount included or if you want to do it separate. C is just like um, number 3. So if you need to use that as a reference, you can. And B is just like number 2. So go ahead and do those, do those examples and pause the video. All right, so B is $18. I use, again, the method where I take the percentage, I add it to 100% to cover everything at once, and so that's $18. Um, C is um, going to be the $42 times, and I combined my 20% and my 6% sales tax, and that's 26%. So when I did it times 1.26, I came out with $52.92. So that's how much it would cost at the spa treatment um, to include tax and a 20% tip. All right, so now here's an example with markup, and it says in example four, you could find the selling price by finding 125% of the amount the store pays. So it says a store pays $56 for a GPS navigation system. The markup is 25%, find the selling price. So we're gonna take that 56, and we're gonna multiply it times, and this again has the two methods that you could use, but I'm gonna use the full price plus 25 extra percent, and when you multiply 56 times 1.25 to account for the 100% plus 25% markup, that's going to be a new price of $70. Now, if it wanted to find out how much just the markup was, then I would do the 56 times 0 0.25 to find out how much just the markup is. But in this case, it's asking you for the selling price, and that's what we're looking at right here. It's the price that they paid for it plus 25% more. So you're going to do D. Again, we're just doing the same thing we've been working on. A store pays $150 for a portable basketball backboard, and the markup is 40%. What is the selling price? So work on that. Pause the video now. All right, and my answer came to $210. Obviously, it's a markup and it's going up by 40%. So if you came up with a number that's less than 150, you missed a step. Um, I'm combining my two steps and doing 140% and changing that to a decimal, making it 1.4, 1.40. I don't care which one you use. Once you do the multiplication, it's 150 times 1.4, which is 210. All right, that ends our video, guys. I hope that you understood what we're doing here. Sales tax tips and markups are super relevant to the real world, so this is something you will definitely see, use, or hear about in your future, so I hope that you understood it. Thanks so much. Ask questions when you see you in class. Bye when I see you in class. Bye.